On today's show, Alex Ovechkin's thoughts on retirement. Can we believe it that he will be a free agent after the 25-26 season? And what are his thoughts on international play? I'll discuss next on this edition of Locked On Capital. Your Locked On Capital, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and oh, welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms, including the Sirius XM app and on YouTube. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. My name is Dan Holmey. I've covered the Capitals for the last three seasons for Locked On and various other outlets before that. I'm also the host of the weekly show called The Capitals Minute Cast, available wherever you find your podcasts. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at Locked On Caps. And the best way that you can help grow the show is to subscribe to Locked On Capitals on YouTube and comment anything down below. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. So, in this edition of Locked On Capitals, we talk about the elephant in the room, something that we don't really want to talk about. Alex Ovechkin retiring, stepping away from hockey or stepping away from the Capitals. We'll talk about that a little bit later. We'll talk about what's next for Alex Ovechkin after his contract is up with the Capitals. Is that it for him for hockey or does he have other plans? A little bit later, we'll talk about his thoughts on international play. We'll then talk about Spencer Carberry's thoughts on the goalie tandem and Capitals players are already showing up and getting in some work. But just to get it going here, talking about that big subject, the elephant in the room, what is next for Alex Ovechkin? Um, we know that he's chasing down Gretzky. We know that he wants to win another cup, but he's already talked about you know, the, the thought about maybe the Capitals not winning another Stanley Cup. He said that, you know, I really hope it happens. I think that uh, former GM Brian McClellan put the Capitals in a good position to do better, but he doesn't know. Uh, he's hopeful uh, that the Capitals can find a way to win another Stanley Cup while he's under contract, but it's uncertain. And he talks about, you know, the future. And I think that once you get to this point of your career, you start to be a little bit reflective. Uh, you're not as youthful. You know that uh, you're on the back nine of your hockey career, and you have to start thinking about what is next. And as a Capitals fan, it seems kind of crazy, a little bit surreal to think about this team without Ovi on the team anymore. Without Ovi being the captain of this team, what will it look like? Uh, kind of a crazy thought to think about as he has been the heartbeat of this team for so many years, but that is what is being talked about. Alex Ovechkin has been contemplating his retirement from professional hockey in recent years. Although he hasn't extensively discussed this topic with the media, he has gradually become more open about it as he nears two decades in the NHL. And time flies, got to be honest with you. You know, they say it, it's true. The older you get, the faster time goes. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's been that long that Alex Ovechkin has been playing in the league and for the Capitals. Uh, but uh, time does fly like that. And it's interesting how we're edging ever closer and closer to the end of his current contract. Now, to be fair, something could happen. He could sign uh, an extension, say he's, you know, 10, 15 goals short of catching Gretzky. Say that was something that happened. That could happen, sure, but he's also alluded to the fact that he would be fine stepping away from hockey. Would he, in fact, do that without catching Gretzky? That is the question. A question. Talking about Ovechkin's potential retirement plans, in one instance last October, Ovechkin expressed his enduring enjoyment to the game, stating that once the joy diminishes, it may no longer be right for him to continue playing in the same manner. He's loved it for so many years. 
But one of the things that I know, uh, being 47 years old myself, is that life changes. Uh, Things that really drove your engine for so many years maybe don't anymore. Uh, I was a drummer in a band for over 20 years. Uh, The thought of doing it again, I I would not want to do that for anything in the world. Life changes. Uh, Things that I was into as a child or a teenager or my 20s and 30s. I'm not into, and I think that's where Alex Ovechkin is at as well, uh, that he likes it right now, but maybe maybe the the, the uh, appeal of it isn't quite what it once was. You know, he's going to another camp. He, we're closing in on another season. He's done this a long time. He's accumulated a lot of money. He's accomplished a lot of things, broken a lot of goals, a lot of records, those kind of things that maybe he looks at it a little bit different uh, that, you know, us as Capitals fans thinks that that's all he lives about. That's all he thinks about is hockey and Capitals hockey. Maybe not so much the case anymore. Subsequently in February, he indicated that he intended to retire from the NHL after his contract with the Capitals concludes in 2526, contradicting his previous inclination to end his career with the original team, D- Dynamo Moscow, in the KHL. And he has talked about that he might want to go back to where he all started. I think right now he's unsure. I think Alex Ovechkin is a guy, I know we're, we're talking about him kind of looking into the future, but if I'm going to generalize the kind of person that I think Alex Ovechkin is for the most part. I think he lives in the moment. Right now, he's happy playing hockey. I don't think he has an accurate idea of what he's going to do after the 25-26 season. I think he has ideas, but I think they are subject to change. Talking about Ovechkin's connection with Dynamo Moscow, currently Ovechkin has hinted at the possibility of returning to Dynamo Moscow, uh, as he expressed to our RIA Novatsi's Andrew uh, Snovetsko, you'll have to excuse me, in a recent interview while he desires to play his final game for Dynamo, where he began his professional career, he believes it's premature to dwell on that topic with two years remaining on his NHL contract. Kind of what I talked about. I personally am a guy that likes to plan everything out. Uh, If you ask my wife, I'm a very checklist-oriented guy. Sometimes it drives her crazy. She wants to have fun, and I'm like, well, we haven't got this done, and we haven't got that done. Um, That, uh, uh, you know, there's different kinds of people. I'm a very task-oriented. I'm a very uh, checklist in my mind. we got to get this and this and this done. He's not that kind of guy. He's the kind of guy that don't press me too much. I want to catch Ovechkin, or excuse me, uh, Gretzky. I want to win another Stanley Cup, but let's not put too much pressure on because I don't know where I'm going to be when my contract is over. Talking about Ovechkin's career and personal ties to Dynamo Moscow, Ovechkin's fondness for the team runs deep, having been developed in the club's ac- uh, academy and spent the initial four years of his professional career in the Russian Super League with them prior to joining the Capitals in 05 06. Despite this, he has maintained a strong connection with Dynamo, even rejoining them briefly during the 2012-2013 NHL lockout. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. And as NHL fans, as Capitals fans, maybe some of you think what I'm thinking. Why would you want to go back there? You have the NHL. You have the Capitals. It's his home. We're going to have to understand that. Uh, I would like to think, you know, if, you know, who's ever listening or watching this, say you went to a different country and uh, you got your start, say, in America and you went to to Europe or whatever the case might be, that maybe you would want to come back home and maybe play one last year in front of your family, in front of your country. Uh, Even though it seems like kind of a crazy idea to us, I don't think it seems too crazy to him. And, you know, I think to a certain extent, Kuznetsov was going through that same thing as well. He took a pretty big haircut to go back to playing in Russia, but uh, it's what he wanted to do. Ovechkin's professional goals and plans besides his aspirations to win another Stanley Cup, Ovechkin is also eyeing Wayne Gretzky's all-time goals record with just 41 goals needed to equal Gretzky's record. He has two years left on his current contract to achieve this milestone. However, he hasn't committed to extending his contract if he falls short. 
This goes back to my original topic. He lives in the here and the now. Uh, he will make that decision probably towards the end of the 25, 26 season. Take a look at it. See, you know, maybe he's catched Gretzky by that point. I think that assuredly, if he has catched Gretzky by that point, he'll probably hang up his Capitals jersey and do whatever he wants to do. Um, if he is a bit short, I would be surprised if Alex Ovechkin doesn't sign some sort of extension to knock out that record. I think I'd like to think just to kind of throw it out there. If he was 10 goals short of catching Gretzky, do you think he would say, yeah, uh, it's been real. It's been fun. I I'm all done with this. I really don't think that's the case. Talking about Ovechkin's thoughts on international hockey. Uh, this is something that is spoke of quite often about players taking part in the Olympics uh, on the international stage. What are your thoughts on it? My thoughts on it, uh, if you're an everyday of the show, you know I'm not in love with it as the team that is cutting your check. If you go get injured, uh, I mean, the team that is paying your paycheck is going to be without your services. Um, and it's an interesting thing. Try to put yourself in that position. Say you were paying someone to build your deck or your garage, and they're like, hey, I got injured and I can't build that garage or that deck. Uh, I'm sorry, maybe in a couple of years I can. But hey, buddy, I just paid you, you know, 75% up front to get that done. Sorry, can you wait to maybe two years or a year to get that deck or garage done? Maybe you can kind of relate to what I'm talking about. That's what my thoughts on it have always been that, you know, I think we look as the Capitals as this rich team and they can afford to do it and they can. But I think that, you know, for me and I think for a lot of other people, it's a risky move. And let's not forget who is, in fact, paying your check. Ovechkin's international hockey aspirations. Furthermore, Ovechkin has expressed a desire to complete on the international stage, particularly in the upcoming games in Milan, Italy. Despite his enthusiasm, uncertainties loom as the International Ice Hockey Federation has suspended Russian national teams from competitions since 2022 due to the Ukraine invasion. Not going to go into that topic. Um, uh, it's a crazy situation. Uh, I, I, I would like to think that if Ovechkin can, if, uh, you know, we can get together and, and Russia can play in these games, I'm all about it. If not, not. I understand his, his need, uh, his desire to want to play on the international stage to represent his home country. Kind of like what I talked about earlier. He has pride in being from Russia, as he should. That's his homeland. Um, but that's something that's, you know, beyond my pay grade. That is something that would have to to be dealt with on a higher level. But I understand uh, his desire for wanting to play on the international stage. Talking about Ovechkin's stance on the NHL's influence over the IIHF's decision regarding the NHL's influence over the IIHF's decision to allow Russian players to participate. Ovechkin has distanced himself in those discussions, emphasizing that he is not a key figure in the NHL's leadership. He has an extensive history representing Russia in various international events, including the Olympics and the IIHF World Championship. So it is a polarizing topic. That's why I don't want to talk about it. That is why Alex Ovechkin doesn't want to talk about it. And I don't blame him. If it's possible, I say go ahead and do it. But if not, the rules are the rules, and that's the way things shake out. All right, so coming up here after the break, if you are an everyday of the show, you know I talk about my thoughts on the goalie tandem. I thought it was going to be Hunter Shepard, and I thought it was going to be Charlie Lindgren, and then Logan Thompson came into the mix. You know my thoughts. You know Brian McClellan's thoughts. But what are Spencer Carberry's thoughts on the goalie tandem? I'll discuss straight ahead. Game time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch with killer last minute deals, all in prices and views from your seat and their lowest price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. And we've all been there. We're busy. We're going to buy tickets to the concert. We're going to buy tickets to the Nationals game. Well, fear not, as tickets are actually cheaper 
closer to first pitch. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N. NHL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Thank you for making Locked On Capitals your first listen of the day. For your second listen, enjoy the Locked On NHL podcast. Locked On NHL provides you with a national perspective on all things NHL each and every day. With national experts and local insight on every team in the league, available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So if you are an every day of the show, if you listen to the show on the regular, you know I have a fondness of talking about the netminders, the goalies for the Capitals historically. It's just something that has fascinated with me. And, you know, as someone that does a, a daily show on this team, oftentimes in your mind, you're like, well, it is going to be this player and it's going to be that player, but I'm not the GM. And uh, as was evident as the move that was made, uh, Brian McClellan brought in Logan Thompson. And, and, and my idea was, well, why did he do it? We have Hunter Shepard. Well, why was it? Well, we know that Charlie Lindgren and Logan Thompson uh, are both entering into contract years. I also know that uh, when Brian McClellan brought in Logan Thompson, it was to make Charlie Lindgren not feel too comfortable. Like we're not just going to give you this job, that there's a guy over here that is also going to want to battle you for playing time. And what does this all shake out to me? And what does it mean for Shep Daddy at the end of the day, as it did appear that he was the heir apparent? Talking about off-season goaltending changes, the Caps made significant changes in the goaltending department, including parting ways with Darcy Kemper and acquiring Logan Thompson from the Vegas Golden Knights. Kemper's inconsistency led to transfer to the Los Angeles Kings in exchange for Pierre Luc Dubois. While Thompson's arrival added depth to the goaltending roster, Charlie Lindgren also had an impressive season, solidifying his position as the team's key goaltender. And, you know, we look at it now, and it's interesting that uh, talking to some Capitals fans, they'll say, Hey, I kind of knew it was going to be Charlie. No, you didn't. It was Darcy Kemper's net to start it last season, and he didn't play so great to start the season um, and never got a chance to prove his game after that. The Capitals struggled. They struggled in the standings. They were up. They were down. They had to eke their way into the playoffs, and they wanted to go with the sure thing. And who was the sure thing at the time? Charlie Lindgren. So Darcy Kemper in that fat contract was expendable. Let's get that off the books. We need a big top-line center. Enter PLD. That is where we arrive at this point of the story. Talking about Logan Thompson's potential, Logan Thompson's potential was occasionally hindered by injuries with his time in Vegas, impacting his playing time and role with the team. However, the Capitals are optimistic about leveraging Thompson's abilities as he enters the final year of his contract. Now, it is a, co a contract year, and it's interesting. Players that were maybe a little bit lackluster sometimes really rise to the challenge. Take a look at Mantha, for example. He was kind of a nothing burger for the duration of his time with the Capitals, except last season uh, before he got dealt there. So it's interesting. The pressure is going to be on Logan Thompson. It is also going to be on Charlie Lindgren. Which player gets an extension? I don't think it's going to be both of them. Uh, as we know that we have Hunter Shepard and we also have Clay Stevenson, not to mention a lot of very qualified netminders down the depth chart. So taking a look at the goaltender competition uh, and what does Spencer Carberry think as he is the coach, the head coach of the team, the Capitals head coach, Spencer Carberry expressed a preference for a competitive dynamic between the goaltenders, rather than immediately designating a clear number one, both Thompson and Lindgren are expected to challenge and complement each other in a 1A, 1B role, reflecting the team's confidence in their goaltending 
options. I think it's healthy competition uh, is a good thing. And I think that, you know, a tough break for Hunter Shepard, that is for sure. That is what I know for sure, for sure, uh, as he has done nothing but kill it at every single level, all the way from his time in UMD, all the way to his time up playing for the Hershey Bears in a brief snippet with the Capitals. I think that he has earned it, and he very well might get that job next season. Or if injuries or inconsistent uh, uh, rear their ugly head, it could happen this next season. Uh, but that's the position that we're in. Logan Thompson, very qualified. Some questions about injury. Bargain basement. They got him for seven hundred some thousand dollars. And you got Charlie Lindgren, who's also making very little money. That they found a way to get two premier netminders at a rock bottom price. Tip of the hat to former GM Brian McClellan. It is going to be interesting to see how this all shakes out. And um. You know, I think the Capitals are in a win-win position. You got Logan Thompson, you got Charlie Lindgren, and to the questions that lingered. And I think that, you know, if you want to widen the lens here a little bit is, I, I don't think they were totally sold that Charlie Lindgren was going to be that same netminder next season. I think they were crossing their fingers and hoping, or we are crossing our fingers, but we don't know. Because if you rewind time to the previous season, he was really good in the month of December and not so much any other time. So um, we're hoping that Charlie Lindgren can kind of have that lightning in a bottle and let out the cork and, and you know, just he'll be him, his former self. But you also have a great backup in Logan Thompson as well, that the Capitals are ultimately in a win-win situation. And uh, I find it quite exciting to see how this all unfolds. All right, so coming up here after the break, we'll talk about the players are already showing up. I know that historically, some of the young players that are vying for jobs, they want to get in extra work, those kind of things, players that are trying to make a name for themselves. Well, some of those players and some veterans as well, along with some new faces, have already showed up at camp. Who are some of those players? I'll discuss straight ahead. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay guaranteed fit your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want it's easy to make your car the mvp and bring home huge wins keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So it is August, but some players have already shown up and have gotten in some work, uh, some acquisitions that were made in the offseason. Well, we got a chance to see what they look like in Capitals jerseys or practice jerseys. And it's uh, it's exciting to see, you know, what is PLD going to look like on the ice? You know, is Mangiapane, is Chikrin, is Matt Roy, are all these players going to be as advertised? And what young guys are really going to impress? I think that Ethan Frank, I think that even Mirshnashenko, I think that a lot of different players are in flux. So everything that we kind of have sketched out, our lines, our D pairings, those are all tentative uh, because it's all going to depend on how it gels on the ice. Uh, some people see Strom as the top line center. Some people see as PLD. It is going to be fun to watch it all unfold. And some uh, questions uh, uh, abound about the Capitals and who is going to land where. But talking about those new additions to the Caps, the Washington Capitals are gearing up for the upcoming 24-25 season and have recently welcomed two new additions to the informal skating session at MedStar. Defenseman Matt Roy and goaltender Logan Thompson joined the team for pre-training camp workouts, signaling the team's preparation for the upcoming season. Established players such as John Carlson and 
and Alex Alexiev also participated in these sessions. Additionally, goaltending coach Scott Murray was present to work with the team on the ice. I like it. I like the players uh, showing up early. You know, you take a look at it, John Carlson, he wouldn't have to do that. I mean, I, there's no battle uh, that he's going to have a spot on the team. Alex Alexiev, a little bit of question mark there, as I think there's going to be people, uh, players battling him for those positions. But it's a good opportunity to see Matt Roy, who looks to bolster the blue line, and Logan Thompson, which I talked about in the previous segment. It looks to be a key addition to the Capitals' netminding tandem. Talking about offseason roster changes during the offseason, the Caps made significant changes changes to the roster, including signing a defenseman, Matt Roy, to that six-year deal. That was Brian McClellan pushing all his chips in, drinking the Matt Roy Kool-Aid, saying this is going to be the guy to alleviate a lot of that pressure on John Carlson, who plays a lot of minutes in each and every game. This move was aimed at strengthening their defense and involved trading for Jacob Chikrin while parting with Nick Jensen. Uh, a strike of genius there by Brian McClellan getting Jacob Chikrin for, I'm going to hate to, I hate to say it, Nick Jensen, but next to nothing. Talking about Matt Roy's background and contributions, while he is an impressive blue liner, I'm going to say, before he was on the Capitals, I'd be willing to wager that a lot of NHL fans, a lot of Capitals fans, may not have been familiar with who he is. Matt Roy, previously with the Kings, brings a wealth of experience to the Caps in his career. He has accumulated 24 goals and 106 points in 369 games. During the last season, Roy contributed 25 points in 81 regular season games and two assists in five playoff games. Offense is not really his bread and butter. He's more uh, of a stay-at-home defenseman, if you will. Um, he's going to score a goal here and there, but not at the same pace that, say, Jacob Chikrin will. Um, but still, we need that really stout defenseman, and I think that Matt Roy fits the bill. Uh, as I talked about before, Logan Thompson, a big move. They got him cheap. Logan Thompson was acquired in a trade with the uh, Golden Knights uh, at the 2024 NHL Draft. He's expected to be a key part of the Caps goaltending setup, forming a tandem with Charlie Lindgren. Thompson's impressive record with the Golden Knights, including a 56, 32, and 11 record and a 9-12 save percentage in 103 games. Pretty, pretty good. Uh, and to get him for 700 some thousand dollars that was just a masterclass by GM Brian McClellan. Demonstrates his potential to make a significant impact for his new team. Logan Thompson is fighting for his future, whether it be for the Capitals, whether it be for another team in the NHL, Charlie Lindgren, and you take a look at it, Logan Thompson both have something to prove. Talking about training camp and season anticipation, uh, the anticipation's already there for me. I, just to, to see them skating around, seeing some video footage, um, and just to see some of these players that I've seen on other teams getting some work in, it's exciting. Giddy with the thought of what this team is going to be able to accomplish. Uh, training camp and session anticipation as the Capitals continue their preparations, the anticipation for the upcoming season is building with the training camp scheduled to begin in September. And of course, in September, I want to say September 16, uh, we will be going back to five shows a week. But excitement abounds for Capitals fans, the players, as a lot of key additions. We know that last season, uh, left quite a bit to be desired. They made it to the playoffs. Yay! They got swept. Meh, that didn't feel so good. So we're worried, or we're more concerned about the positive vibes. We're wor more worried about this team being able to make a push, winning a game, making it past the first round, doing something crazy, and making a push for the Stanley Cup. It's not a fever dream. It's not a Hail Mary pass. I think that... The supporting cast, the players that GM, former GM Brian McClellan, along with whatever Chris Patrick has up his sleeve, it's exciting to see what will potentially be. And as Capitals fans, I know it's hot out. It's 80 some degrees where I live right now. Hockey seems a million miles away, but it's getting closer and closer as the dates keep turning round. All right, listen, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals. Thank you for making Locked On Capitals your first listen today. Now go check out the Locked On NHL podcast. 
where this season never ends, providing national expertise with a local perspective. You can find the link to Locked On NHL in the description so you don't need to search part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It is your team it is every day. Listen, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk to you again next time.